court in progress. Hare Krishna. We continue reading from Bhagavad Gita as it is. Chapter 5. Uh, Karma Yoga Action in Krishna Consciousness, Text 21. Bhaya Sparshe Spar Sheshiv Ashaktatma Vindati Atmani Yat Sukham Sabrahma Yoga Yuktatma Sukham Akshayam Ashmate Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Samishla Prabhupada. Such a liberated person is not attracted to material sense pleasure, but is always in trance, enjoying the pleasure within. In this way, the self-realized person enjoys unlimited happiness, for he concentrates on the Supreme. So Krishna has been telling Arjuna how to act so he can come to the point of liberation. And then he's saying the uh, symptoms of such a liberated person. Shri Yamanacharya, a great devotee in Krishna consciousness, said, Yad avadi mama cheta krishna padara vinde nava nava rasadhamani udyatam rantumasit tat avadi bata nari sangame smaran yamane bhavati mukha vikara shushtu nishthi vanamcha. Since I have been engaged in the transcendental loving service of Krishna, realizing ever new pleasure in him, whenever I think of sex pleasure, I spit at the thought, and my lips curl with distaste. A person in Brahma Yoga or Krishna consciousness is so absorbed in the loving service of the Lord that he loses his taste for material sense pleasure altogether. The highest pleasure in terms of matter is sex pleasure. The whole world is moving under its spell, and a materialist cannot work at all without this motivation. But a person engaged in Krishna consciousness can work with greater vigor without sex pleasure, which he avoids. That is the test in spiritual realization. Spiritual realization and sex pleasure go ill together. A Krishna conscious person is not attracted to any kind of sense pleasure due to his being a liberated soul. So Krishna is saying that a Krishna conscious person is a liberated soul. One who is already under, he's already on the consciousness that I am not the body. I'm not the body. I am the soul. He's already realized this. That is the test in spiritual realization. So that is already he has realized that, hey, I'm not the body. So he, nothing of the body attracts him. He's not looking for uh, bodily pleasures anymore because he's already realized I'm the soul. He's already in the liberated platform. So this is how the Krishna conscious and his, so what is his consciousness fixed on? Krishna. His, conscious, his consciousness is fixed on Krishna. Krishna is saying such a liberated person is not attracted to material sense pleasure, but is always in trance, enjoying the pleasure within. He's enjoying the pleasure within because he's already understand uh, Brahma Bhuta. He's already on the Brahma Bhuta platform, Ananda Maya Bhyasat. He's realized, hey, I'm not the body, I'm the soul. And in this way, the self-realized person enjoys unlimited happiness for he concentrates on the Supreme. So this liberated soul, uh, his pleasure is increasing more and more. Why? Because his consciousness is fixed in Krishna consciousness. So we are being said again and again how that Krishna consciousness in fact begins from the liberated platform. When a, when a soul is liberated, then he's acting in Krishna consciousness. When he's fixing his mind on Supreme, he's no more concerned with the body. He's no more attracted to the uh, pleasures Thanks. of the body. And so how can we reach to this point? We, right now, at least I can say for a few of us, you know, we don't feel we are liberated. We're still within the body. Then how to the, come to the point of liberation? How to come to the point of enjoying unlimited happiness? Anyone? By hearing intent. That's right. 
continue to hear and chant. And we will come to the liberated platform. So, will happen. So. I agree because when we concentrate of hearing, when we concentrate on hearing and chanting, then some of the, not all because we are not liberated, but at some point we start believing in Krishna and um, miseries are less, like we are not fearful of every situation because we know that this is not in our hand. We understand that I don't have a control of my own hand. How can I control the situations I'm put in? And I'm sure that they are for our good to make us learn something or they are right for us. So we start accepting however it is. And I and know it is very difficult. Mm. And then you experience the love of Krishna and the joy because you are happy. The duality is gone. Mm. Like you're happy either if it is sometimes you don't get what you want, but then it's okay. That's not for your good. So you start relating to it. Not always, but when you hear and chant, yes, in some situations, you start doing that. Hmm. That's why it's called Vigya. That's why it's called science. Because you can experience what you're hmm. hearing. You know, you can experience all these things that you're hearing about. Hmm. That's why it's science, Vigya. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. So... Uh, 22, An intelligent person does not take part in the sources of misery, which are due to contact with the material senses, O son of Kunti. Such pleasures have a beginning and an end, and so the wise man does not delight in them. Material sense pleasures are due to the contact of the material senses, which are all temporary because the body itself is temporary. So Krishna is telling Arjuna that an intelligent person does not go run after uh, a sense enjoyment. Okay, we need sense enjoyment. That's okay. That's like, you know, you need some salt in the food. Th that, that is enough, but don't overindulge in sense enjoyment. Because when we overindulge in sense enjoyment, these are the uh, sources of our misery. And all this is temporary. Why? Because the body is temporary. A liberated soul is not interested in anything which is temporary. Knowing well the joys of transcendental pleasures, how can a liberated soul agree to enjoy false pleasure? And so a, a, a soul who's already liberated, he's on the Brahma Buddha platform, he is Krishna conscious, then he understands, oh, I don't have anything to do with the body. You know, the body gives some pleasure, but it gives so much misery also. So why do I want to be again associated with the body? Why do I want to get this false temporary pleasures when I'm experiencing the pleasure of being Krishna conscious? You know, so the liberated soul, he is Ananda Maya Bhyasat. He's already on the platform of the soul. He's feeling happy. The soul is actually naturally happy. Just, just being a soul is being happy. You know? So the liberated soul does not want false pleasure. Rama, the Padma Puran says, Ramante yogi no anante satyanande chadatmani iti rama pade naso param brahma vidhyate. The mystic derived unlimited transcendental pleasures from the absolute truth and therefore the supreme absolute truth, the personality of Godhead is also known as Rama. So Padma Puran is saying um, uh, the absolute truth, the supreme absolute truth is also known as Rama. Why? Because it gives unlimited transcendental pleasure. Unlimited transcendental pleasure. So we like pleasure. Uh, now imagine Material pleasure is, you know, so temporary, so flickering. Now, if there is transcendental pleasure, how much so good, right? And then if this transcendental pleasure is unlimited, unlimited, 
never ending, an ocean which keeps on increasing, an ocean of happiness which keeps on increasing. There is no unhappiness in that. So we can experience that. How? By just being Krishna conscious. By just being Krishna conscious. And that's the reason the absolute truth is also called Rama, right? giver of all pleasure. In Srimad Bhagavatam 5.5.1, Canto 5, Chapter 5, Text 1, it is said, Nayam deho deha bhajam nirloke kastan kaman arhate vit bhajam ye tapo divyam putraka yena satvam shudhyat yasmad brahma saukyam tva anantam. My dear sons, there is no reason to labor very hard for sense pleasure while in this human form of life. Such pleasures are available to the stool eaters, hogs. Rather, you should undergo penances in this life by which your existence will be purified. And as a result, you will be able to enjoy unlimited transcendental happiness. So I, I think this is uh, the, the instructions by Lord Rishabdev to his sons. So he's saying you don't have to work very hard for sense pleasure, you know, even the hogs. Even the pigs are getting sense pleasure. So what's the difference between you and a pig then? But rather you have this life and you can get unlimited transcendental bliss. But how? You perform your austerities. You purify your existence. You try to realize yourself. You engage in self-realization. You become Krishna conscious. So you're not only, you. then this sense pleasure is like, eating stool for you because you're getting so much, so much pleasure, unending pleasure, unlimited pleasure by being Krishna conscious. Therefore, those who are true yogis or learned transcendentalists are not attracted by sense pleasures, which are the cause of continuous material existence. The more one is addicted to material pleasures, the more he is entrapped by material miseries. So these material pleasures, the sense pleasures are actually like a way to trap us they trap us, they give us more misery. The more we try to enjoy our senses, we get more misery. If I, you know, it, it, it always, it's always like that. Our, our material pleasures, they make us more and miserable. Why? It's because we are going to keep, continue to remain here in the material world. We are going to continue to think we are the body. We are not able to understand, hey, I'm not the body, I'm the soul. So they're causing us miseries. And, and we can see also that how the fish, she gets attracted by the bait. She sees the worm, eats the worm, but that's a bait. Or the moth gets attracted to the light, goes towards the light and gets killed. So all these are sense pleasures. For we also, us also, we engage in indulgent sinful activity. The result is suffering. That's why we are said, hey, don't indulge in sinful activity. Then, because it's like a, a, a net. It's a net by which Maya Devi keeps us here. So we should try to aim for this Brahma Sokhyam. Brahma Sokhyam, unlimited transcendental bliss. By cultivating our Krishna consciousness, reviving Krishna consciousness. Yeah. Is that okay? Yes. Did you want to add or share anything? No, this is just that from the Gita Ratna Mala, uh, the highlight is that the sense enjoyment is ultimately distressful for the shloka. Yeah, sense enjoyment is ultimately distress. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. That's what... Thank you for sharing. They have written yes. this one. Goranga yeah, the source. Lachi. Mm, thank you. Yes. We think, no, no, we are enjoying. We are enjoying. But it, these are sources of misery. Mm. So how, what to do? How to en enjoy sense pleasure then? We can, uh, we can engage them in Krishna consciousness. Like we can taste prasadam by the tongue or speak good things and cook and go temple and hear and chant and serve Krishna, offer tulsi leaf, pluck with our hands and clap and dance. Yeah. 
we can inject, yes. we can engage them. We in. use our senses. Yes, we use our senses in this way. And whatever talent we have in whatever field, use them for Krishna, connect them to Krishna. And we'll automatically feel the pleasure. And one thing also today very important, there was that all the senses are the demigods, right? They are representative, they are of, representative yeah. of the demigods. So even if so, when we engage our senses, I think even they are happy. Oh, yes. And they also yes, get happy, right? Yes, very good point. Demigods are happy when we engage uh, them in the service of Krishna. Yeah, because they are the representative of all the senses, all. Like whatever we could even ima imagine. So yes. if we engage somehow, then they are also getting the pleasure. Yes. And they are happy. Happy, yes. That's right. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. So we'll stop here for today. Thank you Thank so much you. for listen, listening and enjoining. And Shla Prabhupada ki, Jai Bhagavad Gita ki, Jai. Gaur Bhakta Vindaki Jai. Hare Krishna.